Hey guys, yesterday I tried to make uh, some uh, refactoring of one of the old apps and apparently I just deleted everything related to Redux and it seems like in a modern age we actually don't need any Redux uh, code anymore because like in general you can have everything done similar to Redux with React hooks uh, and use context especially if you have something that just changes for specifically that set of components like for example if you have a set of profile fields or a form wizard with a couple of steps and you have to just maintain a single state between a couple of views you can just use uh, use context for Re react hooks uh, which is uh, obviously re uh, more reliable than Redux because in terms of Redux you have a lot of moving pieces and uh, you you have like ability to just misconfigure that stuff uh, I know there's like tons of videos on YouTube about how to properly set up Redux stuff but why do that, that things really more complicated uh, you can just really build up stuff without any dependency Re react uh, giving all that stuff and on the other hand if you are going to use uh, GraphQL and Apollo client like for that scenario you don't even need any kind of Redux for communicating with your API Re react uh, GraphQL client with Apollo it just handles everything uh, including like caching uh, integration with hooks and etc so the whole process of having a centralized store in order to keep everything and make a redux uh, reducers or like uh, even sagas it doesn't make sense anymore and it just adds tons of complexity for example you no know, last like refactoring that I have done uh, last week on my older apps I just removed uh, hundreds of lines of code and just replaced uh, with 10 plus lines uh, which is basically doing the same but using react hooks so Let's just uh, take a look on the specific example that I have done in a like, step-by-step -step manner. Uh, I'll try to explain uh, why I'm not going to use Redux anymore and why it is, um, adds a lot of complexity to your front-end application. So stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet checked our previous videos. Uh, go see what application we are actually building and uh, it is pretty close to be published don't miss that uh, video of uh, publishing a desktop application to Mac store so hit that subscribe button and be notified uh, whenever new video comes up so I made this uh, pretty standard react app with the create react app uh, I just wanted to demonstrate uh, how you actually can use uh, use context in React hooks uh, similar to Redux and like don't have any kind of dependencies from outside of your project just a plain React uh, so we are not going to do anything fancy just the structural changes that we have to make in order to just understand what is the concepts here uh, so we have uh, the definition of app.js and it is a plain uh, react app yarn start uh, th this one just uh, comes along with the standard uh, create react app so if we'll just uh, take a look here it's just plain as usual react app that we have so if we'll try to uh, make some kind of a form wizard or couple of uh, components uh, just to keep the single state uh, we, we will have to have some kind of like center state 
uh, in order to manage all that stuff. So let's let's make two form uh, components here just to understand the concept behind uh, form one. Uh, this form uh, will be a basic one uh, with a single uh, form field. Copying uh, for making second form uh, again with the plain input without like any fancy stuff in order just to demonstrate uh, what is the uh, use context itself and how you can use that. Uh, so we have these two forms essentially like just that they are plain input text uh, nothing more. So and we are making another file for context. So this one this file is actually for making a context variable uh, just to share that across multiple components and use really just to change a single data store. So there is a default context as an argument uh, that we can provide, but it is more of a uh, if you want to make a con. A constant sharing between components and not really changing anything but because we are using it from the provider itself uh, we are not going to provide any uh, context here but instead uh, we will have some kind of a default value for that let's say export cons app ctx default and for default value it is going to be let's say uh, input and it is empty thing. So a second value actually for the context is the callback function which is going to change this input. So in this case we have field change callback function uh, which is whenever it's called uh, it should receive event with target and value and it is going to do nothing at this case so this function actually comes along inside the main component that we are using it is not defined default here so that's most of the important part just to understand that this context is actually some definition the actual value for the context comes inside the app.js when we are going to provide the provider itself. So when we are telling that, hey, uh, we want to use our context appctx.provider, we also provide a value for that, which is actually the default uh, for our app context, which is just this one. So app ctx default and here is the main value that we are going to set so we're making use state and as you can see the actual uh, the actual change that happens here is for the input right and for the input we have set input let's say which is inside app state itself. So basically the wrapper component, which is the root one, is just uh, keeps all the state uh, variables and changing functions uh, inside that. It's very similar how Redux itself works. By the way, the Redux reducers comes with the provider and provider itself keeps everything uh, in touch and re-renders entire uh, child components if something is changed. Same goes here, but instead of the Redux's uh, huge provider, you can use this context whenever you need. It doesn't matter it's it's root up or not, so, and, and you don't have any dependency. So that's the whole uh, point of this. And you have 
like less code base because anyway you are going to have this uh, set state for the input component itself. So we are adding the another field let's say let's keep it here input and field changed like this so after keeping this uh, provider here we can just add for example form one which is the blank one and form two so in this form one and form two we are going to use same input uh, component and after changing one another should follow along so when we are declaring a, a context we are getting uh, the actual context values uh, as an object like use context and getting app ctx so in this way it is this one is the client uh, which receives the entire object that we provided for the context and what comes along is the input value as you can imagine and also field changed changed or change always forgetting this kind of stuff field change okay and what is the okay we had <laughs> we had a bug here so we found that one that's good so whenever this field is changed we are providing a callback and we are adding a value so same thing goes with the form 2 and whenever this context is uh, changed so whenever we are typing typing something is ID one of the inputs that we have here this uh, callback is triggered and because it comes uh, as a ob object with this callback function which is a set state function of the app root app itself whenever this calls uh, calls happens the set state changes the root app's state uh, with the input value and which passes along this provider and re-renders all the components which are attached to this uh, context so the key part here is that when you don't have a use context in your child components that components wouldn't be re-rendered that's the like whole beauty of having this one instead of redux whenever you have a connect uh, your state will be re-rendered that's insane and with redux it's easier to break your app performance down than with this thing it's just uh, happens to be way more efficient uh, in terms of coding and performance wise so you, you can check benchmarks uh, actually so when we are hitting save let's go back to our browser okay we have an error here form 2 is not defined okay yeah sure we haven't imported that one okay let's just copy form 2 and form 2 always hitting the wrong keys here okay let's see what happens use context is not defined seems to be this uh, auto import imports not working here okay yeah i just made it a copy past okay lower yeah, we get here to our inputs and whenever I'm typing something, whoops, is giving me an object. So in order to receive the input change itself, uh, because our input fields are coming uh, directly from the input change, which gets as the uh, event inside target and the event value, uh, we are extracting all that uh, to get the value itself and uh, set the state function and we are passing this uh, defined uh, function from app.js uh, to our context which 
passes across all the components with use context. And uh, after that, we are basically having our component working here, as you can see. Example, the actual Redux uh, usage is uh, kind of getting uh, like where way more difficult than the React context uh, and the React hooks itself providing. So if you consider uh, using Redux over this React hook stuff or you are trying to understand uh, why you actually need to refactor your code base, uh, please uh, write down a comment and uh, explain your case. I'll definitely try to uh, jump on your case and understand uh, what is the problem there or why you actually considering uh, to not follow along with React hooks. I'm just curious about that. So that's, that's it for this uh, video and uh, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, every, we are publishing here uh, about two videos uh, weekly and uh, stay tuned. Uh, we are pretty close to publishing our time blocker app. If you don't know yet what it is, please check uh, our videos. We are building a desktop app and it is going to be published soon. Uh, and uh, the whole process is recorded. So stay tuned and uh, hit that subscribe button. Uh, see you.